This is going to be a film study video about Lions defensive tackle, defensive end, outside linebacker, John Kaminsky. I'm sure I'm going to call him Frank at some point in this video. I've attempted to not do so. Look, I first really became interested in the Lions team in 2022, somewhere around the, the week 11, 12, 13 turnaround. They had that really tough opening stretch with close losses to the Eagles, Vikings, Seahawks, and Dolphins. Then they had, when they had the resounding Week 11 win over the Giants, uh, who were 7-2 and two at the time, that one kind of caught my eye. Close loss to the Bills on Thanksgiving Day, four days later. And then the just dominant home win over the Jaguars, 40-14. to 14. Somewhere in that stretch, I guess it was during the Bills game, I noticed this like physical and versatile guy that lined up seemingly everywhere, number 79, John Kaminsky. He turned out to be just another Lions player who not only does his job on every play, but can adapt mid-play because of the, the technique, aggression, and awareness level that he has, that he's coached to have. Interesting player. One of, one of the, my favorite film studies to do. I hope you enjoy it, uh, especially if you're a Lions fan. I think John Kaminsky represents... So much of what Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell are trying to create there in Detroit. And there's, and there's a lot of players who, who represent it, who become the quintessential Lions. They're just tough, smart, physically strong guys that are committed to doing their job. But after watching film of Kaminsky, I'm an even bigger fan than I thought I would be. And I really be, you know, became a huge fan of his during that Week 18 win over the Packers. Of course, the forced fumble that I showed you with the first play. Look, he only had 30 tackles this year, okay, after, after coming over to Detroit from Atlanta. 30 tackles, four sacks, 12 quarterback hits, despite playing a lot of snaps. So there'd be some, I'm sure, who would say, you know, he didn't really have that much impact. He's not as good of a, a player as, as you're making him out to be. I've selected a number of plays here for this video that just show his athleticism. And I don't mean athleticism like pure speed in the 40 or athleticism in a traditional, in, in a singular sense. I mean it in a, in a way that he's showing you in these nine plays that I picked, a multitude of skills and ability to make plays inside in the A gap, in the B gap, outside. The final two plays I'll show you here in a moment are going to be examples of him Uh, running to the sideline to make a tackle. This is an example of the Lions basically predicting where the run play is going to go, slanting into the play call, meaning the run play is coming in this direction to the top side of the screen. The offense is left, defense is right, and the Lions are slanting Kaminsky in one of the D-tackles, and the Lions' D-tackles are tremendously underrated, if you ask me, into the play. They're not trying to slant it with the flow. Uh, you know, a long conversation to be had over this. I've had this conversation many times with friends of mine, former um, coach, guys I coached with. We always wanted to slant into the zone, into the stretch. Then we could predetermine it for the running back. In this case, they slant Kaminsky down, goes directly past the left tackle, gets involved in a tackle for loss. I'm going to show you a statistic here in a moment. I'm going to bring up something that I, I think is really interesting. I was not the first person to discover it. But I'm going to use it here now to illustrate, I think, the importance that uh, John Kaminsky had in 2022. Now, this might just happen to line up perfectly with the Lions' 1-6 and six start. And then their incredible comeback to finish with a winning record. It, it might be coincidence. What you're seeing on screen is a game-by-game -game statistical breakdown of John Kaminsky in 2022. Every game he played from week one loss against the Eagles to the week 18 win against the Packers, including three, team, three games where he did not play, the third, fourth, and fifth game of the season, inactive. Not sure. It doesn't, I'm not sure if he was hurt or what, but the snap count was considerably low when he did come back against Dallas and then Miami. I'm going to give you the stat. I can't remember the commenter, tremendously astute, who pointed it out to me, so I'd like to give credit if you are listening this long, please let me know, and I'll, I'll shout, give you a shout-out in some manner. 
In every game where John Kaminsky played less than 30 snaps in 2022, the Detroit Lions lost. They were 0-6, including three games where he was inactive so he didn't play a single snap. That pattern ended after the loss to Miami, 31-27, where he played 12 snaps. The very next week, when they beat Green Bay at home, I think they intercepted Aaron Rodgers twice in the end zone, he played 30 snaps. Week two against Washington, he played 31 snaps. Kind of an arbitrary number for me to pick. It's convenient for me that he only played 28 snaps in the week one loss to the Eagles. So that, that 30 as the barometer or as the Mendoza line in terms of how many plays John Kaminsky was on the field, you know, give or take a couple, maybe they're one in five in, the, in those games. But in any case, if you include the three games where he was inactive in every game, where Kaminsky played less than 30 snaps. The Lions gave up 33 points per game in those six contests. In the 11 games where he played 30 or more snaps, the Lions gave up 20.8 points per game, and they went 9-2. and two. Correlation, uh, causality, I'm not sure. But like I said, a really astute commenter, uh, commentator pointed it out to me after one of my videos. And I wanted to show you the stats and let you make of it what you will. Let's get back to some of the film. I'm going to show you two plays that I think, um, first of all, they're very interesting to me. Uh, even more so than the deflected pass against the Vikings, where I think John Kaminsky adapted in the middle of an X stunt that wasn't executed for whatever reason by the other guy. This, this to me, this play and the next one show how committed he is, even during the moments when he probably realizes mid-play that he's not going to get a statistical attribution for what he's doing. This is a bull rush against the Jets' uh, right tackle in the end zone. He's just committed. Uh, might seem inconsequential, I guess, compared to plays that are made, you know, the thousands or millions of plays that are made across the NFL every year. But it, it just shows me he gets a quarterback knocked down here, I believe. He sets the right tackle up for other moves later on in the game. It just shows you how incredibly powerful the dude is, uh, committed. I've used that word probably too many times. Ultra committed. Dan Campbell, you know, used that phrase. He wants guys that are going to, you know, bite the opponent's knee, kneecaps or something like that. And to me, that's why I named this video Dan or John Kaminsky the Lion is because him and some other guys on this team, particularly the D tackles, who I really, really enjoy watching film of, they just do everything to 120% of their capability. And you get situations like this where, you know, maybe the ball is thrown a split second earlier to Garrett Wilson. And if you don't, you know, <clears throat> like me saying that about that play, check this one out. I think this is super interesting. He's, um, he's got the H back to his side. The right tackle steps to him. Kaminsky ends up peeking inside to see if the ball was handed off. It looks like it could be possibly a, a split zone play where you've got the lineman, you know, stepping with the zone to the right and then the H-back going here. People have different names for it, whatever you want to call it. Could also end up being, you know, a pass concept where the H-back the slips out into the flats. But watch Kaminsky um, in terms of how he takes on the blocker, what he's doing mid-play, angling to hold off C-gap, but he's peeking inside. He's peeking inside the B-gap. You can see his helmet here. We don't have a great angle of it, but he's trying to see if the ball is handed off. And then once it's not handed off, he decides, all right, I'm going to go. And he starts to fall down in the middle of this play, but keeps driving. It's that extra little bit of effort that this Lions team showed last year in coming back from that one and six start. And then I feel like John Kaminsky in some ways is a perfect representation of. I'm going to rewind this or let it flow back one more time, I should say, just so you can see that, you know, the ball was thrown just slightly off target to Garrett Wilson, and I think Kaminsky plays a role in it. Does he get a quarterback hit? Does he get a quarterback knockdown? I don't really care. That's not the point of the video, and I'm not sure that, that John Kaminsky or Dan Campbell care either. A couple of plays here at the end to illustrate his athleticism and pursuit. I think he's lined up here next to uh, James Houston, the fourth at the bottom side. I don't think this play you know, shows an uh, – Shows it as well as the following play, how athletic he is. But you saw it on the first play, the forced fumble against Green Bay in Week 18. His ability to close and, and play through contact, through attempted blocks. 
and make a play near the sideline. This is another example of him being involved in a tackle at the end, a little bit of extracurricular maybe, but I think the following play, the final one that I'm going to show you, um, illustrates it even better. Touchdown saving tackle going to be made at the bottom side of the screen against the Panthers on essentially a, a downfield screen call to, I think, Chenault. And Kaminsky's the guy who makes the tackle that saves a touchdown. There, there is a, a moment in this play where I think he could keep running, and I'll pause it here in a moment in case you're unsure. This is Kaminsky here, and he's going to run here somewhere in this area. He's going to kind of gear down, and, you know, were you coaching him, you would say don't gear down. Keep running, you know, even if it looks like your teammates are going to make the tackle down here. And there certainly is, you know, triangulated or whatever shape you wanted to use to describe in terms of Chenault being um, surrounded. Kaminsky is the guy who ends up making the tackle. I, I'm looking forward to watching this Lions defense and, and seeing um, people be proven wrong. When I say people, I mean people that um, talked about how bad they were at the beginning of 2022, which they were, there's no doubt. I think there's a whole lot more pieces here defensively on the D-line. I'm talking about the interior D-line. I never thought that the Lions needed to draft an edge rusher, Aiden Hutchinson, James Houston IV, the Okwara brothers, uh, other guys as well can play out there. John Kaminsky can play out there. I think I called him Frank a couple of minutes ago. Look, I'm not sure if this video convinces people that John Kaminsky is a, is a great player because I'm not trying to say that. I just think there's hundreds of guys across the NFL on teams everywhere that deserve credit and deserve mention for the way they play. Because I ended up watching a lot of Lions film near the end of the season and then in the offseason, Kaminsky was just a guy who stood out to me. Ability to play three technique, ability to play four eye, you know, inside shade of the tackle, play five technique. You saw in, in some of the plays I showed you that he played – Outside linebacker on a 3-4 look. Very versatile player. Uh, really fits well, I think, in the Lions' multiple defensive look. I can't wait for them to start playing defense this year. I suspect that they're going to be a far better defense than they were last year because of the safety additions, also because they retained a lot of good players. James Houston to fourth hopefully gets more reps. Aiden Hutchinson, uh, I, th I would think, will be better, and they brought back their defensive tackles. Uh, McNeil, Bugs, Kaminsky, I would throw in that mix, even though he's not a quintessential D tackle, 6'5, 285. He's a hybrid D tackle, D end outside linebacker that I just wanted to point out and give some respect to and some props to in a film. You guys, if you watch this long, first of all, thank you. Second of all, let me know what you think of the video film study. If you're as impressed with Kaminsky and, and the statistical correlation that there appeared to be in terms of him playing 30 snaps or more. And the Lions going 9-2 and two in those 11 football games. Appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Lions fans would enjoy this film study of John Kaminsky, please consider grabbing a link to this video and sharing it out on social media to help my video get more reach.